This is 3D printed concrete. This is 3D printed metal. And this is 3D printed glass. So how would we use all of these, or any of these, in the design and construction industry, and specifically in the design of fascinating structures? Hi, I'm Paul Kasabian. I'm a structural engineer, and I've been lucky enough to work in all three different 3D printed materials on structural design projects. So I want to go through with you three things today in this video. First, what are the amazing things about 3D printed technology? Second, what has been done with 3D printed technology with materials and structural design? And third, where might we be going with this in the future? First, complexity is free. We normally think of other normal ways of fabrication that the more complex an object, the more expensive it's going to be. And that is typical in normal fabrication approaches, but not in 3D printing when the machine is dealing with the complexity. Second, variety is free. And by that, I mean, if you want 10 of the same thing or 10 different things, the cost is the same. And that's not what we're normally used to. But think about 2D printing. When you print on a printer, the page you print, the printer doesn't care if you're printing basic lines, text, or a very detailed color image. The same applies in the 3D world. In fact, I worked on a sculpture with Ralph Helmick for uh, the MIT Brain and Cognitive Science building. It's called Schwerpunkt. And when you enter, there are 100 unique 3D printed nodes. And when you get to a specific spot, they all line up to form an image of a brain. That's cool. Third, no assembly required. And by that, I mean you could now think about printing in hinges or connections in the items that would normally have to be assembled by hand. Here's an example. This is a necklace that you can actually sort of create and order online from a company called Nervous System. Really great company. And all of the hinges in this piece are part of the 3D print. They didn't have to assemble this complexity. Four, less waste. By that, I mean you're only using the material you need in the print, and then, especially for powder-based prints, the rest of the powder just gets reused for the next print. So in a world where we're caring about embodied carbon and use of materials in, with limited resources, you can optimize the use of material in 3D printed structures. And number five, unlimited shapes. We're no longer constrained by the forms that we have to produce by other typical methods, so that frees up our design thinking, which also means we now have a design challenge to do better than we've done before. I'll talk more about that later in this video. Okay, let's go through the three different materials, 3D printed concrete, 3D printed metal, and 3D printed glass. First up, 3D printed concrete. And there's been a lot of this around specifically as relates to residential construction and also theme parks and benches and interesting forms. A lot of startup companies are out here in the space right now. Icon, Madco 3D, Picus, Apis Core, great firms all trying to do better in the design and construction industry that we're in. And really let's hope that things develop and improve because you've got to give something a go to make things better. There's also some academic pursuits. Philippe Bloch over at ETH in Zurich is creating some optimized bridges and optimized slabs for floor slabs of building that use minimum weight topologically optimized forms. They're fascinating, they're lightweight, they're lovely to look at. This is an exciting area. And I've also had the chance to work on some 3D printed concrete structures. We're working jointly with UPenn and Sika, and they have a mix of concrete a form that we're looking at. You'll see here that this is an optimized form, post-stressed concrete beam, which has a lot of potential for how we might use a minimum amount of material. The 3D printed concrete material itself that Sika produces, there's actually a part of it just behind me here. So here you can also see them testing it out and the classic people on beam just to prove that it's safe. It really is an amazing structure and starts to make us think about what types of forms might we produce now that we're allowed to think more freely about them. 3D printed metal. Now this has been used quite a lot over the last few years, typically in the automotive and aeronautical industry, where lightweight materials and a total lightweight is critically important. Now that's kind of important, but not the driver in a lot of architecture and construction. 
But being able to use all the benefits of metals and 3D print them is exciting. Now we've seen some of this with the 3D printed bridge in Amsterdam by Joris Lahman. And I've worked on this design project where we had about 100 unique connection items to various types of pieces of glass. So we couldn't use a standard what's called spider connection that's cast because that's a singular design as a product. And so we designed a process of figuring out optimized forms for every single unique case and then had one of the pieces printed right here so that we could test it in our in-house lab. Here's something super interesting about this. We designed this thinking it would be stainless steel and the person who was printing it asked, why wouldn't you do this out of titanium? And I said, well, because titanium is more expensive than stainless steel, right? And he went, not when you 3D print it because the melting point's lower, which means it uses less energy, quicker to print, that means it's a lower cost. So this is 3D printed titanium, that's cool. It's an optimized form and therefore the material is distributed on the lines of greater stress. Not only that in terms of a volumetric form, but this is actually hollow. This piece isn't solid like you would get from a casting, it's hollow. If I was at Apple, I would do something like this and I'd say, this is 1.5 millimeters thin because don't let grammar get in the way of what is actually a cooler way of explaining things. It's one and a half millimeters thick, but still weirdly lightweight and pretty fantastic. We did a technical paper on this, which I'll put a link to in the description below. 3D printed glass. We worked with Neri Oxman when she was at MIT on producing a design and testing in our in-house lab this piece broken from the total amount that we tested in our lab of 3D printed glass. There's also that piece just over there behind me is also where this piece broke off from. And this allowed us to determine the structural and material properties of this totally unique material because glass is ancient, but 3D printed glass is very much of now. And the process of 3D printing glass gives it very specific properties that we need to know to do safe structural design with. What's fascinating, of course, about 3D printed glass is you can use recycled glass material, you can create a range of different forms, and then the result is, with shifting light, this mind-blowingly unique result that is truly beautiful. Now, where this is going is going to be pretty exciting. We're doing some follow-up physical testing work and structural design with Michael Stern. This is his firm, Everline. And Caitlin Becker, who runs a research group and has work on glass properties and design at MIT. So where are we going from here? Because frankly, 3D printed technology is in its early days, and that's very exciting. And in many ways, the limit to the use of the technology is us. Have a think back to the Iron Bridge in Colebrookdale in the UK. This was the first bridge made out of metal. Truly an astounding advance with that new material at the time. But what they did was connect the metal using wood joinery techniques because after all, that's what they knew in terms of joining materials. It took a while for us to develop the ideas of what else might we do with this new material metal and connect it using bolts and welding and rivets as they initially started with. So I think what matters in terms of developing technology is freeing up our mind from where we've been. For example, look at this toy, right? It's a lot of fun. I didn't design this. You can get these online. This happens to be 3D printed metal. You can get this in 3D printed plastic. But it is a set of spheres nestled one inside another and 3D printed in this way. This hasn't been assembled. Spheres in spheres in spheres is absolutely fascinating. It's a toy. It's a fun toy. I mean, it really is. Right now, it's a toy. But there's something here when you think about it, there's something here which means let's think about what else we can do with 3D printing in any or all of the materials I've mentioned that would be new. One thought I've had is, you know, let's not think in isolation. We have 3D printing. We also currently have 3D scanning. 
I think it would be super interesting with all of our existing structures, especially historic structures that need repair, we could 3D scan the areas that need repair and directly take that geometric data and 3D print a matching piece to that so that our repair material and structure perfectly matches the unique 3D existing needing repair structure, right? So if we just think about 3D geometry, 3D data, how can we link that between different technologies we have and do something we hadn't done before? So very much like the sculpture that I designed at MIT that produces a brain only when you're in one spot, maybe we could all think about different ways where a few things click together to form something unique and new. If you like this video about 3D printing or any of the videos that I've been doing recently about structures and material and form and design thinking, like and subscribe. See ya.